Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, Keld, on an issue they came across while trying to match the subsurface scattering effect found in the Metal Ray in Maya 2009 course. Okay, so this is the scene file that was provided by Keld. Now, let's start by just taking a render of this to see how things are looking. Okay, as we can see, we're getting a little bit of an effect here. Um, but it's really uh, not what we'd be going for. So I'm going to save this render out. And if we take a moment to think about something in real life that has subsurface scattering, uh, say the wax of a candle or something like that, we notice that we really see the effect more when we have a light shining through the object to help bring that subsurface effect out. So the same is actually true in the virtual world. So uh, if we notice we have a light here, so let's hop over to a top view. We have a couple of lights, actually. So where are they in relation to the actual camera? Now, right now, we can't see our camera. So I'll come into Display, Show, Cameras. We can see that our perspective camera that we're rendering from is facing the object from this direction. And the lights are not set up to be opposite the camera. So it's not going to be able to see that effect in the way that we would expect. So I'm just going to take one of these lights here. Let's go ahead and move this over and rotate it so that it's basically opposite our camera that we're rendering from. Okay, something like that. So let's open up our render view again and let's re-render this back out to see how this looks. Okay, if we zoom in here we can see we're kind of getting some effect here on the edge now compared to before. But overall the image is pretty dark so uh, what I'd like to do is actually brighten up the image. Uh, so let's save this render out and to brighten up the image, a real fast way of doing that would be to select your camera, go on the attribute editor, and adjust the background color. You brighten it up a little bit. And then if we turn on final gathering, the final gathering rays will take the background color into effect to really help just brighten up the overall scene. So I'm going to come in here and turn on final gathering. Okay, now let's come back in and render this back out again. Okay, and if we come back in and look in the corner here, or in the edge of this sphere, we're see that we're getting some effect on our object from before and now. Now the next attribute for this that I'd like to take a look at is actually the radius. So let's uh, close out of our render view here and let's open up our hypershade, select our material, and the Actually, we're going to want to focus on is the back radius because that's going to affect the uh, back subsurface scattering. Now, the actual value that you put in here is going to be highly dependent on the size of your overall scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by really cranking this up quite a bit. And we can always come back in and dial this down as we need to. Okay, so let's open up our render view again. We can see right away the effect that we get is completely different from before uh, by cranking up this radius. It's a little large, so we can come in and dial it back down a little bit, maybe to 50, in order to get whatever sort of look we're going for. Okay, so this is uh, what it looks like with a setting of 50, as opposed to this is 75, and this is 50. Now, once again, I'd like to reiterate that it's really important the radius is going to be highly dependent on the scene size. So don't be afraid to go in there and play around with some of the values in order to get the look that you're going for. Now, the next thing on this particular shader, we notice that there is a texture that's plugged into our diffuse channel for the diffuse color. But the diffuse weight is set to zero, so it's really not having an effect. So let's just set the diffuse weight to, say, something like 0.5 so that we can see the texture on the on our object here. All right, we're uh, getting our texture in there now. But if we notice, it's still really grainy. So if I were to come into my render settings here, I can bump up the overall uh, anti-aliasing quality to really help smooth out some of that grainy effect that we're getting there. All right, this is looking really, really good. Uh, as compared to before, we really smoothed out a lot of that graininess. Now, before I close this lesson, the last thing I'd like to take a look at is that we actually have a displacement map on our sphere. If you notice, the displacement, displacement is a light gray, so it's going to be affecting our entire sphere. 
So let's go open up our render view and save this render out. And let's see what happens when we just disconnect our displacement map. As we can see, the size of the sphere has gone down quite a bit without that displacement on there. Now, if you want to learn more about displacement maps, there's a good lesson that explains the pros and cons of using displacements in the Introduction to Maya 2011 course. So that's a look at how we can fix the subsurface scattering for this particular scene. Now, we adjusted the light so it can shine through the object to bring out the subsurface scattering effect, as well as the radius of the effect keeping in mind that the values that we put in are going to be highly dependent on the actual scene size. So don't be afraid to play around with some different value settings in order to get the exact look that you're going for.